A popular YouTuber- Holy fuck, Anna Sarkeesian. I'm not even in favor of trail warnings, but this is actually the best argument I've ever seen. A popular YouTuber by the name of Matt Santoro recently released a very public statement on his vlog channel talking about an abusive relationship that he ended back in September. Now, understand that he didn't reveal the name of this individual. There's a lot of speculation as to who the individual is. It's not fucking speculation given the time frame and public statements made by other people. When he talks about it within a certain amount of time and it's public knowledge that he was in a relationship with Nicole Arbour within that time and then after the video he does Nicole posts her own video talking about the abuse story it's not fucking speculation at that point it's pretty obvious who he's talking about but the 14 minute long video is something that everyone should watch in its entirety I'm gonna be linking a little bit more in my description than these journalists so, I also still advise watching all of the videos in their entirety to make sure I'm not quote mining. But, that's up to you. I'm going to give you more details on it, but first let's take a look at a clip of what he had to say about it. And this individual that I was with forced me to push everybody out of my life. I pushed my family away, I pushed my closest friends away. And it wasn't always explicit. It wasn't always like push that person away, push that person away, delete them off social media. Although that was the case, mostly with females, this individual that I was with was extremely jealous, viciously jealous. If I had a female friend, I must have been cheating on her with them. I've been cheating on them the whole time. Uh, I had to cut every female out of my life out of social media, delete every number out of my phone, and it was because everything was made to be about her. And I, I lost my friends, I lost my closest friends because I was made to believe that everybody else was a loser. Everybody else in my life that didn't agree with this relationship, they're losers. That's why... They're saying these things, and you need to cut them out of your life. So I did. Early in the relationship, we had, I had a verbal altercation with this individual where after I, I had a panic attack one night because I couldn't handle walking on eggshells around this person. Uh, so I left an event that I was at, and I broke it off with this individual. This person prevented me from leaving their home and said, you're not going anywhere. At which point, I was hit in the face. Okay, so I, I have some mixed feelings about this. Okay. Okay, uh, but we know who it is. We already know who it is, but there's speculation still. <sighs> you people are idiots. But let Anna give you the details more, and then I'll, yeah. uh, I'll tell you where I come out on it. So I really want you guys to watch the full video, but it starts off with him crying. So mm -hmm. if anyone who watches that, it, it doesn't strike you as inauthentic or insincere. You can tell he's hurting, you can tell he's gone through some stuff. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. Don't tell me what I think. Don't tell me what I feel. Don't tell me what I can see or I know or I can tell. Because you don't know what's in my head. And I'm sick and fucking tired of people telling me what I think instead of fucking asking. So, here's the deal. I have mentioned a couple times before that I am somewhere on the autistic spectrum. Which means I don't pick up on non-verbal human communication as well as the average person. So I'm not great at picking up on facial expressions and body language and tone of voice. So I don't consider myself a very good judge of sincerity. I don't trust my own judgment on that at all, no matter how many times I do end up being proved right. So it doesn't necessarily mean that I think the average person is much better.
because I've seen too many liars and public fraudsters and just general charlatans have millions of people listen to them and believe what they say without question that I really don't think the average person is capable of knowing when someone's bullshitting. So no, I'm not going to just trust your objective judgment on it. Because you don't have an objective judgment. People's facial expressions and things, they can, they can mimic um, sincerity. People can fake it quite well sometimes. And they can win over millions of people, especially when they're very charismatic. And we are talking about someone who's managed to get a channel with over 5 million subs. So we are talking about someone who must be in some way charismatic. Right? And on top of that, if you really wanted to convince someone of your position, why don't you actually go with some evidence rather than you know he's telling the truth? Instead of saying, oh yeah, you, you can tell he's hurting, why don't you actually go and find some evidence of Nicole being a bad person or, or lying about something or, or actually being abusive? No. What you do is, instead of doing actual fucking journalism, you just regurgitate a story from some other news site and then base your own ill-informed opinion on your own preconceived biases. And also, he's a man, and it's really, really difficult for men to come forward and talk about their you know, experience as domestic uh, violence victims, right? Yeah, it's totally not like you're part of the problem. But honestly, I hadn't even heard or seen the Hope Solo story until today. Apparently she uh, assaulted her half-sister and also her 17-year-old nephew. When authorities were called on the scene, they said that she seemed to be intoxicated and that the victims had visible injuries. <laughs> um, the reason why I don't, I, I'm afraid of this story is mm -hmm. because Hope Solo's husband is a former pro football player named Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens has been accused of some fairly horrific acts of violence. She also might be in an incredibly violent relationship. I, I don't know, he seems like a super violent guy and I don't know, and it may turn out when this is all said and done that, that, that she is under his spell mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened and I guess we should take all acts of domestic violence, whether they're perpetrated by a woman, it just seems like we're white evangelicals saying that we're discriminated against in this country. You reported on a woman beating up her half-sister and her 17-year-old nephew. Your colleague's first response was, I've heard some rumours about her husband, therefore it's probably all his fault. And how did you respond to that? Did you question him? Did you challenge him? Did you ask him to back anything up? No. What he did was change the subject the second you got the chance. You see, if you really want to present the idea that you're an advocate for gender equality, you actually have to fight inequality. When someone starts saying blatantly sexist bullshit right in front of you, you have to say something about it. You have some kind of obligation if you consider yourself a decent advocate. But you're not a decent advocate. You're a shitty advocate for gender equality. But you aren't a bad feminist. You're a good feminist. Just like all fucking feminists. We're for equality. I'm one of the good feminists. Not all feminists are like that. Usually it's thought of as a, a woman's issue. <laughs> like, the issue is men beating up women. We also should not divert our attention from what is the real issue that has been brushed under the rug, we, that we don't provide resources for women who are in very real danger, or not real danger, but they think they're in real danger, and either way, they deserve protection until they can figure out that they're not in real danger. And so, uh, focusing on Hope Solo seems a bit of a misdirection for me. And if you're a man, don't complain about it, don't talk about it, because that makes you weak. Or women's violence is blamed on men, sometimes even the men they're violent to, and mainstream feminists sit there and agree with it. Don't challenge at all. And he talks about that a little bit. I, I want people to understand that's not what my mixed feelings are about. No, 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 I, I, I know, I, I know. I agree with him 100%. I believe him 100%. Why? Why do you believe him? Are you actually going to give a, a reasoned argument? 
Are you going to back it up with anything, or are you just going to base it on some subjective bullshit? See, this is why I can't stand this believe the victim mentality. Because it's... First, it assumes its own conclusion that everyone who says they're a victim is a victim, until you get to the point where two people are saying they're victims of each other, and then you choose the person that you like. This is why I base everything on evidence. This is why when you have a very serious public case like this, you have to reserve your judgement until you find something. <sighs> Not going on a fucking witch hunt. Yes, okay, and, I, and, I know that. And his that's partner's what... a total douchebag. Yeah. Called it. So, look, there's a lot of speculation about who it is. Speculation. Again. Why? You know who it is. I don't want any vigilante justice against this person. I wonder if you'd report on it if it happened. But it's well documented that he was dating Nicole Arbor, who was that notorious, terrible person on YouTube who made that Dear Fat People video. To even see a woman as capable of abuse, to treat her like a man in this case, you have to pre-demonize her. She has to do something so terrible and against your ideology that she loses all... She loses her woman card, effectively. This is why I can't trust you. This is why I can't trust feminists or your camp in general to do anything rational on this. And this is why I'm going to expect some vigilante justice against Nicole. Even though I don't exactly like her. I don't exactly like Matt either, but that's another story. So really, this is a problem. I'm sitting here and I'm trying to be reasonable and trying to find shit out. And you're just siding with the person who fits your narrative best. Okay. But well, uh, she pretty much admits it. She does pretty much admit it. So I'll, let me get to that in just a second, okay? Okay. So I think it might be a good time to start looking at the evidence as opposed to let's go on a witch hunt because we don't like this person. Because clearly that's not productive. Let's look at, well, first let's look at each of their stories. Let's see how they contradict, how they line up with the evidence. And let's also look at how each of them has misbehaved throughout the case because both of them have. So, I think it might be a good idea to start from chronological order. So, this didn't actually start when Matt uploaded his video on his vlog channel. It actually started when Rob Dyke did an interview with Drama Alert about this case. And that was in September. And Rob is a friend of Matt's and was recounting what Matt had told him about Nicole. So now a friend of mine, Lawrence Southern, decided to write an article on this. And decided to also get Nicole's side. So she started out with a title that wasn't exactly pro-Nicole. It wasn't exactly friendly towards her, but it was at the very least not anti-Nicole. And then starts to describe a witch hunt mentality and defends her content to an extent, which I think is reasonably fair, because I think both of those were very reasonably justifiable. And then she starts um, talking about the allegations that were brought towards her, and then links Rob Dyke's interview. Then she starts to talk about Nicole's side, and took a private interview she had, and just quotes it all. And then, right at the end of the article, she says something which I think is extremely reasonable. It should be common sense to make a substantial case before attempting to ruin someone's life. Regardless of your thoughts on Nicole's video content, not being critical of word-of-mouth rumours can lead to toxic results. That goes for both Nicole's and Rob Dyke's respective stories. So, her conclusion is that we don't have evidence for either of their sides, so we really can't make a determination on what anyone is saying is true at this point. Which is a reasonable thing. So, her opinion on it, and what she actually claimed, was that she doesn't know what happened. Okay, so what happened next was, soon after, Lauren started a group call with a bunch of us on the B-List Sky group. And I was there and a couple of other people were. And what she started talking about was what had happened on Twitter that day. And Matt Santoro had heard about the article and wasn't exactly happy. 
So Santoro finds the article on Twitter and accuses it of bias and starts to threaten legal action. He also misspells libel, and that kind of annoys me. And then he writes a second tweet towards Lauren directly and says, oh, I have screenshots, so don't bother taking the article down. Then he proceeds to take the tweets down, but Lauren still had screenshots. Irony. So then they have a conversation within the messages on Twitter, and I got permission from Lauren to use this screen cap. And after she explains that she didn't have evidence for either of them and told people that you can't believe either of them, he then threatened legal action again, uh, says don't contact me any further, and then either unfollows or blocks her. Guy with 5 million subscribers on YouTube threatens an unpaid journalist with legal action and a libel case when the article doesn't actually even make any direct claims about him. Uh, it was a real dick move, even if she didn't actually hear anything from him afterwards. He probably went and looked up a little bit more about libel law and realised he didn't have a case. But still, dick move. So... Now what caused this recent controversy is, according to Matt, he accidentally made a video talking about his abuse public that he intended to keep private and had uploaded in September. And then it had gotten a lot of messages and support, so he decided to re-upload it on his vlogs channel. Then what happened was Nicole uploaded her own video. So she denies the allegations and brings up her own story but there were a couple of things in the video that were slightly off. Like this, for example. She starts out the video with an old recording of them together, being playful, and it just appeared to be a little manipulative. But now we have a couple of claims that Nicole made that I can actually check. I unfortunately just... Something in my heart didn't feel it anymore, and it didn't mean that he was a bad person, it just meant that his lifestyle in the way that he wanted to be a YouTuber and have everything public all the time wasn't for me, and I broke up with him. So now we have proof that something you said has definitely been false, because that's not the original story you went with, is it? Quote, we continued to date and were quite happy until I saw him start to spin again a few weeks ago. Knowing this is a warning sign and seeing my videos getting more views than his was affecting him. And I decided just being friends was best. See, now you're changing the motivation. And there's also one other problem. So I decided to check your YouTube metrics on Social Blade. And what did I find? Matt Santoro's channel outclassed you the whole time you were supposed to be in a relationship. And the only time your views ever went above his were after you had ended the relationship. Turn to, as my videos were doing well, he suddenly started doing interviews, or getting his friends, people I'd never even met, to do interviews about me and our personal life. So now in this video, you're claiming that the increase in views was after the relationship and he's only got angry afterwards. You're not doing well, Nicole. It seems you're having problems with staying consistent. But I had asked repeatedly while dating him that my private life not be put on the internet. And he repeatedly overstepped that boundary to where I felt violated over and over and I was new to YouTube I was new to vlogging and all that stuff and there was blurred lines but I repeatedly said I don't want the following things on the internet and he would overstep it and we broke up briefly and he moved down the street from me after we broke up while we were broken up he got a place down the street from me in hopes that we'd get back together, and we did. And we did, and we dated for a bunch of months after that, and it was fine. 
Well, we have a couple of claims here. So number one, we have the claim that she broke up with him because she didn't want her private life on the internet. This also conflicts with the interview she had with Lauren, in which she states, We broke up initially because when my videos started getting more views than his, he wanted to focus more on work. I agreed I'd never stand in the way of his goals, and that was that. When you're contradicting yourself and your story keeps changing, Nicole, it doesn't help. And again, I will point out, she was not getting as many views as he was until after they broke up. The second time. So now we have a question. Did Nicole want to keep her private life off of the internet? And did he want her back or did she want him back in the first breakup? And here's where it gets really dodgy. I don't want my private life, my real private life, out there. So, I'm pretty sure I was linked in a comment section to a video made by Nicole Arbor but was not posted on her channel. And I put it, I thought, on my watch later, but for some reason it didn't show up there. So I had to search through my YouTube history to find it. And this is what I found. This copyright strike isn't suspicious in any way, but it was actually the name of the video that ended up making me question. So I decided to search Dear Matt on YouTube, and this is what I found. Hello, Internet. It is me, your friend Nicole Arbor, and... I'm doing this vlog today, holding on to the shit for dear life, because a bunch of things have happened the last few days. The best part about the last few months in my life has 100% been dating Matthew Santoro. It's... we... it sounds cheesy, but we fell in love instantly. Like, instantly. And... He texted our manager and said that I'm the girl he's gonna marry, and I had texted my friends the exact same thing about him, and I meant it. And if you saw his vlog today, you would see that we broke up, and I'm making this video not to explain it, but to say that I think we made a mistake. I think, I think we made a mistake. And I think, Matt, if you're watching this, and I know you're going to, because I'm going to send it to you, I'm sorry, and I made a big mistake, and I think that we've made a mistake here. I'm not going to get into details about stuff, but I think we've made a mistake, and I think it would be a really big mistake in our life, and I love you. And this is, like, really scary for me to make this video, because... I don't usually do stuff like this. Both accounts, both the one on the Libertarian Republic and the video Nicole did, have glaring inconsistencies with each other, have glaring inconsistencies with Matt's story, and where they can be verified have glaring inconsistencies with reality. Sure, none of this proves that she actually did it, that she was actually abusive, that any of what Matt said actually happened. But it begs the question, why would she lie? Yeah, the video that I just got that shit from has now been copyright struck while I was making this video. I'm now genuinely scared I'm going to get my own copyright strike, but I'm going to fight it if it happens. Also, please download my video. And if it does get taken down, I give full permission to others to mirror it and re-upload and shit. So she said, heard the little bitch I dumped months ago is still trying to use me to get attention on his vlog channel. Ew. Yeah, uh, I, I can't even defend that at this point. I would have 
been willing to give Nicole the benefit of the doubt for a tweet like that. It sounded angry, but now it just sounds spiteful. So, I guess my final verdict is that Matt's story holds up a fuck ton better than either of Nicole's do. And that whatever I could verify, Nicole has effectively been a pathological liar. And the one thing I could really verify from Matt's video was actually true. Which really doesn't help Nicole's case. And on a final note, I think I wouldn't mind addressing Matt Centauri. So, one thing is, it would be a nice idea for you to apologise to Lauren. You kind of threatened legal action when she didn't really do anything illegal or wrong. And second point is addressing a small claim you made in your abuse video. If that has ever happened to you, there are resources out there for you. So, this really isn't the case. Services for male victims of domestic violence are rudimentary at best. And there's almost nothing. Most governments treat domestic violence as a women's issue. Even Saudi Arabia does. And so does Canada. Which made it an impossible legal battle for Earl Silverman to get funding for his male shelter. Because he had to go to the women's organisation, and then back to the government, and then back to the women's organisation. And was sent back and forth for years. He ended up running out of money from his own pocket, because that was how he was funding the shelter. And ended up killing himself. You're in a specific position where you could raise awareness about this issue massively. I would just advise maybe considering doing so. Let's just hope this video doesn't get a strike. If it does, you know what to do, guys.